to say. So I've just been staying back and forth between my dad's and Aki Pro Las Vegas, but I don't really think that I kind of want to be staying out there anymore. It's kind of gotten to be a, a crazy place out there. Uh, so I've heard. I've heard a lot about that. Lots of random home, homeless people stay there. And uh, not to say that it's it's all bad people. There are some really awesome people that stay out there. Like there's a guy that wakes up every morning, first thing, and just makes everybody breakfast. He's like the official cook. <laughs> you know, people come throughout the day to drop off food. And, uh, there are some really good things about Occupy Las Vegas, uh, the site over there. But uh, I'm, I was excited to hear you, you say how you wanted to start uh, an Occupy UNLV movement because uh, I don't think that there's very many students out there at the Occupy Las Vegas, and, yeah. and I think that there, sh there should be, and I think that there would be if it was a better environment. Um, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I just think that a lot of people that go here wouldn't want to be sleeping in freezing temperatures in a tent. <laughs> I, mean, I, I see the people's point, it's like a sit-in, and, and I was down for it, and have been down for it, but um, I think um, starting an Occupy UNLV is a, is a good way to... Um, to get a better image of the Occupy movement in Las Vegas, because uh, because it's going to be you know students, and it's not going to be uh, a group filled with, with homeless people or <laughs> drug addicts or, or you know things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I just think that we should start this off by you know um, really trying to just bring more people in, more students in, and, and by getting them informed. And I think that the more we inform people around campus, the more they'll want to become part of our group. And then from there, we could try to do great things with our, with our movement. So. Yeah, definitely. And you are? Sorry, it's not letting me connect to UNLV for whatever reason. Because I, they know you're preoccupied. Probably. Because <laughs> they know, they're like, ooh, those damn hooligans. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'm Sam, hopefully you guys know that by now. Um, I got involved with Occupy because my dad is one of the key players in Occupy Portland. Oh yeah? Yeah, and I was, uh, I was actually visiting him the weekend of their eviction, so I was out there protesting with them against the eviction with like 7,000 other people, and it was, was kind of crazy. And, you know, when I, I got to see an inside look at it, because my dad was so heavily involved, and I realized, you know, this is not something specific to one area, it's universal, you know, everyone has these problems, everyone has these concerns. And so, when I got back home, I was like, alright, I need to get involved here in Vegas, and I've been working with Area 99 for, I don't know, a little over a month now, but... The first thing that I really wanted to do was to find a way to help educate people about the movement. Because I think Occupy's biggest problem, biggest obstacle, is that no one understands it. Like, no one really knows what we're about, what we're doing, what our goals are, what we want from the government. And so, like, but my could, thought was... But could that be a good thing? No, that's not a good thing. Because we want... We're the 99%, you know? It's the entire country. There's, like, maybe... A handful of people that are like absolutely against everything we are but we're the 99% and every single person in this country should be rallying with us because they are all affected by it and so the more understanding we get the more uh, support we get the stronger our voice will be when we tell Congress you need to stop like the the more people we can get on our side the harder it'll be for them to ignore us and so uh, thought the best way to do that is, you know, get the brightest and educated minds, the people that are learning, people that are actively trying to figure out how this crazy world works, you know, and, you know, sit them down together and have this, you know, us together here. And so I just, you know, I just started emailing people, like, how can I make this happen? And now it's happening. So that's kind of my goal, at least, is not necessarily to start problems on campus, you know, and get, get in trouble with campus police, but I want, like, this is a place for education. We should be teaching people. We should be helping them understand the world because I don't think a lot of people do. I don't think they understand what we say, what, what we mean when we say we're the 99% and we're against the 1%. I don't think a lot of people understand that. I don't so. think a lot of people care to understand that because it's just uh, a... Yeah. They're just like, they just think of this negative light, like, oh, it's just a bunch of, like, you know, 
Yeah, and that's it. Like, everyone's like, they're a bunch of, like, yuppies that don't know what they're talking about. Good jobs. Or, yeah, they're all homeless people, or they're all people that don't work and want handouts and stuff like that. And I'm trying to prove to them, you know, we're college students. We have tuition that we have to pay. We have to get here every day. We have to study and work and do all this. And on top of that, we are still being active citizens. Like, like you can't just narrow us down to one group. Like, yes, we do have homeless people. Yes, we do have people that don't work. But that's not a bad thing. Like, we need to prove to them that this group is way more diverse than just a bunch of people that are angry at the world. But that's not what Fox, for example, says. Well, screw Fox. <laughs> no, Fox, okay. My biggest problem with any criticism of the Occupy movement is that they're basing all of their judgments off of what they get in the media. And the media has been so biased and unfair and casting a bad light on us to discredit us, to make us look like a bunch of drug addicts that are sitting in a park just to cause problems and throw trash everywhere. Like, they're making us look so bad when they haven't looked deeper. Like, these people will call us, you know, people, at, like freeloaders, people asking for money because we just want to be rich. Like, they, they're assuming all of these things based off of what the media shows them when, you know, if you took 10 seconds to come down to the site or to go to a GA somewhere and just sit there and listen and talk to people, you'd realize that it's so much bigger than that and so much more important than that. And so, like, the media is just, I don't know, they have us strung up in the entirely wrong way. And I think There's our hardest... some good media reports, like MSNBC. Some, some, so, some of them are a little more fair, but I think it's really difficult for anyone to dig through all the bullshit to find what's true. So what you're saying is that... Or How about our third person now? Oh, yeah. a third person. Yeah, third okay. person. The man that needs a haircut. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. <laughs> all right, so uh, my name is Alstriberto Hernandez. Uh, everyone just calls me Austi. Uh, I've been active with the community with, uh, uh, for example, like... Well, this summer I got an internship with uh, the, work, the Culinary Workers Union, uh, Local 226, and I was working uh, on a campaign, uh, an anti-stations uh, union campaign, uh, anti-stations campaign, in order to uh, form a collective bargaining unit inside of stations casinos. Uh, you know, and that's how I started, you know, like a year and a half ago, I would have never seen like myself here in this side of the spectrum, like, sticking it to the man. I was like... <laughs> Right wing conservative, you know. Yeah. So oh, all right. Reagan sponsored. Uh, so, so 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 <laughs> you're a so so technically you said you were you were a conservative. Well, I mean, the the title the title is fitting. However, the, the description that goes underneath the whole idea of conservative it's not necessarily reflected in those who call themselves <laughs> conservative, so to say, in, in that nowadays. And I mean, my conservatism is based off a, re a religious standpoint and a religious uh, understanding. So, Upbringing? yeah, and uh, I mean, uh, personal faith, I mean, it's not, I mean, well, yeah, I learned it in my home, but not forcibly imposed, so um, that's how I started. I've been following Occupy since, uh, well, since it started in Wall Street, and just like, uh, when I was working at the, at, the, at the union, I met a whole bunch of, uh, of very interesting, educated people from all over the country um, that were involved in... Uh, and forming collective bargaining units and uh, unionizing and you know fighting for workers' rights, um, just rights in general, civil rights, and uh, that's it. Just it really it really got to me. It was it was a personal thing, especially when I saw it here in Las Vegas with uh, station casinos and the way they were treating their workers, and that just like you know hit me like a ton of bricks. Like this is actually happening. And uh, so, what did the uh, folks at stations or the the uh, the, the work the supervisors do to to people there? Uh, well, examples. Allegedly, <laughs> uh, the beginning of last month, there were over 201 viol uh, alleged violations of federal labor law against their workers. Things like harassment, bribery, intimidation, wow. and uh, you know, just like threatening workers to not sign the card, don't sign the card, don't form a collective bargaining unit because we're treating you better. You know, and uh, people who try to people who were trying to form this collective bargaining unit, who went straight forward and said, "I am part of this movement," were outright fired. Uh, like a percentage, a high percentage of them, which were Latinos. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I mean, if you look at the statistics, I mean, I'm not I'm not trying to be like, oh, uh, they're singling out Latinos, but I mean, I, I can't. I'm, I'm not in a position to make that call. 
However, it is important to notice that the statistics, the statistics speak for themselves, and I'm not going to make assumptions without you know the numbers to back it up. So it hit it hit home. I mean, like I'm a Latino, I'm um, a whole life just like living in North Town, taking uh, like racial slander for myself and my family when I know perfectly well that I know the white man's history in many cases better than he knows it himself. <laughs> so, I mean. We're all Americans here. We all want an equal playing field, and it's not happening. And I mean, racism might have just been, uh, you know, just a tool that that white colonialists, European, uh, Western um, European colonialists, used to, you know, forcibly imply their domination or divinely sanctioned uh, oppression of uh, the third world. Um, but I mean, it's still affecting everybody nowadays. And uh, so you're saying this, the the leadership of, of station. Now I'm not taking the side of stations, okay? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I'm I'm playing devil's advocate here. So you're saying station the owners of station casinos are still doing this imperialistic type of attitude? Uh, I'm not going to uh, say that they're following an imperialistic uh, sort of attitude, but the numbers speak for themselves. And it's and you, you can make a call. I can have my own opinion based on right. that. And you can have your own opinion based on that, right. but the numbers speak for themselves. And it might be imperialistic style, like it might be racism, it might be corporate avarice, right? It might be any any of the above, or all of the above, so to say. <laughs> but uh, I'm not going to just directly outright say that. So it's because of uh, so in short, the, the 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 one percenters who, or I forgot the guy people's names, are you saying that they're <sighs> subjugating individuals? Yeah. You know what I'm I'll, I'll take a stance on that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I'm using a word I haven't used in years. Yeah, and it's not and it's not just Americans. It's, it's the rest of the world. Right. So I mean, outsourcing. You know, yeah. You know, paying somebody a quarter a day, you know, eighteen hours of labor in a, in a Nike factory, and you know, so it's not just it's not just ninety nine percent here in America. It's ninety nine percent of the world. You know. Right. So. Yeah, I'm just kind of you know. Trust me, this is going to go all over YouTube tonight. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. That well, it's going to be on my Facebook. Right. But 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 the thing is, is that uh, so so you're a UNLV student here, correct? I am. And you being a UNLV student here, I presume you don't live on campus. You live in North Los. Yes, that is correct. You, you live here? No, I live on in, in North Los. Well, no, 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 okay. So so you as a student, uh, what 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 are your Observations so far of uh, Occupy, and, and what do you plan to be doing here with Occupy UNLV? Well, uh, first of all, my observations here at UNLV, um, the majority of people here are completely unaware of what is going on. Like our space cadets. Space cadets? Yeah, like, yeah, hey, what's going on, man? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, space cadets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, a lot of people don't know what's going on. I actually have friends that... Um, on my Facebook, that um, I'm posting like um, you know like all these posters and pictures that that Occupy everywhere is posting, and I'm just like you know just letting everybody know, I'm not like forcibly you like shoving things down people's throats, but hey, look at this picture, you know, just think about it for a second, mm -hmm. and people, oh, uh, you're a communist? What? No, I'm not a communist, <laughs> but I mean, there's there are things that are happening in this nation, things that are happening right beneath our noses, and we are completely unaware, and. Why aren't we aware? Maybe it's perhaps we are in Las Vegas, and you know, corporations like as opposed to 40 years ago now own this town. You know, so it's it's not really hard to see the line. Like, okay, so this corporate this corporate run city, I mean, is, is housing uh, a little bit shy of two million people, and mm -hmm. most of them aren't aware of what's going on. Well, yeah, it makes perfect sense. Most of the people that are employed here are employed by those corporate giants. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't be in their best interest to let their people know. <laughs> What's you know? What's going on? You know. Yeah, like, you ever thought about running for political office? I have. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So, all right. Okay. We're 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 getting.